Starving, stomach touching, no lunching, broke, no hope, pocket lit clutching, can't eat, can't sleep, can't function, cop pushing me in the street, bum rushing, pull something out of the trash can and ate it, pretend to imagine in, my mom just made it, breath smelling like boat smoke with no soap, sprinkle of soap, holes that my toenails poke, and my sock from walking the block with no shoes, if I die, I won't even make it on the news, bump chill, giving the spill and narration, on your watch, legislation yeah. Talk about my tax dollars, put it in contents Buy land, build a complex, it's not that complex uh -huh. I'm not impressed cause we're failing the test Folks claiming that they're blessed, but you're looking a mess uh -huh. I'm in raw, keep a watchful eye in my eye What you do when the dark comes out on the block? Kids with no place to go, they just roaming Pushed out from gentrification and zoning Honing on the issues, get it fixed So we can praise you on the next one, remix If Colorado's the best place to live, change it Homeless can't even get warm meals or blankets Need you, promise to do something but we don't believe you But we don't see that you so well Man, done. I ain't cock the streets Need you You promised you do something But we don't believe you Man, I ain't cock the streets Need you You promised you do something uh. Picture the vision Do you care how they living Is your pride of mouth I had cock the unforgiving Forbidden people who treat it unequal Never in the sequels, this world is pure evil There's a war going on outside, face your fear Lack of humanity damaged us from the rear We got money for wars, but can't house the poor Bank accounts galore, hiding billions offshore Too many rich people making meals Poverty's profits are deceptive Now tell us who's a villain, you'd rather see them in coffin We seen it too often Mental madness, you a savage from your talking Like a toy all wound up Homeless caps round, double bill from the ground Up a skin to come around, plus What would you do if this was you? Would you take it for granted the way you do? We know you would Man, I ain't cut the streets, need you You promised to do something, but we don't believe you Man, I ain't cut the city and need you Promise to do something, but we don't see you Man, I ain't cut the streets, need you You promised to do something, but we don't believe you Man, I ain't cut the streets, need you You promised to do something uh. Down, looking like a war zone Many despondent, no place to call home hmm. Let me expound just a little bit Families is homeless, city ain't dead shit We don't need sweeps, we need solutions Hypothermia just keep executing Excrement covers the streets where kids plant they feet But we throw them a dollar just to eat Wandering into that old mission Just one night of shelter is not sufficient Another shot at life is what they need in a decent place to rest their feet Remember one false move You can be in their shoes So watch who you turn your nose up to Aurora and Denver is not the same But we still say justice for Elijah McClain Man, I ain't cut the streets Need you, you promised to do something But we don't believe you Man, I ain't cut the city and need you Promised to do something But we don't see you Man, I ain't cut the streets Need you, you promised to do something But we don't believe you Man, I ain't cut the streets Need you, you promised to do something Evidence. You've been hesitant and negligent to protect the residents and unhoused veterans Those you're traumatized, you can learn a lot from the lessons of life How to provide protection, the message to the mayor, please understand This is a rapper whole youth in Cheyenne land In a pandemic, citizens are dying, man No place to use the toilet or wash their hands And no safe outdoor space to shelter in place The facts you gotta face, you could never erase Your lame duck legacy, past the buck policy, history of hypocrisy, fake ass apology The Maha City's now a danger zone You disrespect City Baca and Calderon And now we see you got your sights set on D.C. Well, we gon' let the whole country know Come Believe on, me. me I ain't cut the streets, need you You promised to do something, but we don't believe you Man, I ain't cut the city and need you Promised to do something, but we don't see you Man, I ain't cut the streets, need you You promised to do something, but we don't believe you Man, cut the streets, need you, you promise to do something. Uh. Wow. Sweep trash, not people. <laughs> sweep, sweep trash, not people. Um,
You disrespect C. DeBaca and Cal Daron. I love that lyric. <laughs> Jeff Campbell, I love you for including that lyric. He said you disrespect C. <laughs> you, you, you disrespect C. DeBaca and Cal Daron. How does it feel to have a black man standing up for a black and Latina woman? I, I love that, and I just love all the black men who are on that. I mean, just coming together, putting those lyrics together, Brother Jeff, your little profiling. I mean, it was just brilliant. Dr. Lisa <laughs> Calderon's in the Free Think Zone. <laughs> what have you been up to um, heading, other than heading up Emerge? Oh, goodness. That's been taking a, a lot of my time, but um, fall is my favorite season, so I've been also trying to get out there um, appreciating open space. So I am really oh. glad <laughs> to be on this conversation I today. just made that connection because you're always, you are always in the... Um, Outdoors. Every That's time right. I see you, you're like in front of some mountains on a trail or whatever. I mean, you yeah. don't want you don't, you don't want to go and you know be amongst another eight thousand cubical pieces of concrete. <laughs> like, oh, look at this concrete. Right. Nobody does that. Even even Gerald has seen my pictures out there on the trail, and yeah, thank you. And then the dogs, and but you know that's also very intentional because you know I grew up in Colorado, and it's a beautiful state, and uh, and for some reason some folks think that we should not have open space for folks of color, and so I want to be able to show like we need that too, right? That there's so many benefits to being outdoors, so. Yeah, this is this is a great time of year. So if you haven't just been out, and you don't have to go to the mountains, right? You can just go someplace nearby and right just now, appreciate right now, the seasons we right have. Right now, but if you let these grubby developers <laughs> have their way at it, every piece of every piece of land is going to have a tall square box. Ooh, look at that! Con ooh, condo. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> I don't yep. know anybody sitting around unless like you're a developer. And that's saying, oh, I want some more. I want some more buildings. <laughs> or developer supporters who are, like, getting paid for some more buildings. And they right. say things like this. And we building it for you because we need some affordable housing. <laughs> <laughs> like, we, really? We're going to talk about that. <laughs> this is a mile-high income city, and you got folks talking about, we's about to build some affordable housing. Yeah. <laughs> do, do you believe that? Well, no. And so we'll, we'll unpack that. And, and we'll talk about the Yimbies, too, who are backing them up, being the cheer, cheerleader behind the scenes and co-opting the language of housing justice and, and social justice. Um, but we know what it's really about. So I, I look forward to diving into that. Well, too. I think you better hit them with that trigger alert then. All right, then. <laughs> trigger alerts. This is a show that triggers people because you've entered a free think zone. If you're not willing to be exposed to other points of view... Uh, tune out now and don't read the comments. You have been warned. Boom. You've been warned. Dr. Lisa Calderon has hit you with the uh, trigger alert. Ooh, I want another parking garage. <laughs> <laughs> Give me another one in parking garages. You know, because, you know, we got to park. We got to park. Uh, Not a park, but we got a park. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, don't we get me started. And another, we, another brewery. Can I get oh another brewery God. and another and then a and a park? <laughs> and let me like a park, no place where I can park. <laughs> like my gosh, you know, um, Justice Gerald, we're hanging out with the sisters today. It's a big day. You can feel the energy. I want to just take a quick moment and say um, hello to Shanta and Tosh. What's up, ladies? <laughs> what are you? What are you two up to? Just stirring up a little trouble. Oh, good. <laughs> good pull trouble. that mic up to good you. Good trouble. Good you, trouble. Pull that mic up to you. Um, stirring up good, good trouble. Good trouble. Yeah. Doing some good trouble. Oh yeah. Um, you. Uh, hey, let me just ask you a quick question. Um, Tasha and uh, Shanta, you want another parking garage? <laughs> Not, <laughs> not even. No, 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 I do not want another sea of concrete. I, I, why would you want to pave over such a beautiful space? We need to breathe. Right. Can we breathe? Right. Mm. I don't know. Can we breathe? I mean, don't we deserve to breathe too? Well, let me ask. Let me ask uh, Tosh just real quick. Mm -hmm. You want another? parking garage so I, so what i'm seeing is a uh, bumper sticker right you can put it on your bike you can put it on your skateboard your scooter it says more parks 
less parking garages. Yeah. There you go. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. No. I'm <laughs> surrounded by all the sisters. You know the great Leanne Wheeler has walked into the first thing zone. Hey! She has traveled home safely. You know. Welcome, welcome, welcome back, uh, the great Leanne Wheeler. We're having a conversation with the sisters today, and if you are in the area, come on by the Free Think Zone. It's a, it's a big time. It's a big day. And um, Dr. Lisa Calderon and, and crew, you getting your mail? Oh, my oh, gosh. Man. The glossies. You getting your glossy glossies Ugh, in? Man. I'm so sick of glossies. I, you know what? I'm, I'm about tired of this election season. Oh. It's kind of yeah. wonky, and it's, and it, and it's funky. And mm -hmm. so lopsided, right? It's always oh. so lopsided mm -hmm. when we have the dark money coming in. Mm -hmm. And that money really right. is like, like they benefit from Colorado. They have, mm -hmm. and Gerald has more. Like we keep getting more. <laughs> I swear, um, the school board race individual candidate has reached a half million dollars. For, wow. Now that's one. Is something wrong with that. Something is terribly wrong with that when you mm. see where the money is being spent, right, and who it's being spent on. Mm -hmm. But we've seen this before, right? I mean, this is just a repeat. It comes up every election cycle where there's this battle for the school board and, um, and people saying the same thing, right? We all care about kids, but you right. really got to dig deeper than the nice glossies. Mm -hmm. right. Wow, so much. We're, we're just winding up. Um, you know um, the Tan Tigress running with my girls. Have you seen the documentary yet? I have. It's I have so too. good. Have you? I've seen it. Okay. What do you think? It's amazing. <laughs> the Tan Tigers did her thing. She Rebecca Henderson, shout out to you. <laughs> um, but she's got this documentary, and it highlights uh, the run with Dr. Lisa Calderon. She was running awesome. from there. Um, yes. Candy C. DeBaca, she uh, ran for city council. Um, and won. And won. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. Chantel Lewis. Yes, and yes. won. Yes. And yes. RTD yes. director, you know, and um, our favorite, our, our favorite sister is in there. Who's the fourth one? Well, we have Veronica Barella. Ver Veronica she, Barella. She's been the matriarch. And there's a fifth one. Um, yes, we have. So um, Sh uh, Shayla. Shayla Richard. Yes. Yes. I love that. Like, okay, everybody, running with your girl, run, running with my girls is my girls, right? Um, yes, my running with my girls because so it's from Rebecca's. Point, point of view, of view. <laughs> following Rebecca's, us around. Rebecca, she did her thing. Rebecca is a brilliant filmmaker, and um, as, you know, as well as Trish. I mean, they made a great team as they went along, and there, but there were other women with them too. And so this was an all-women production, and really looked at through all of our eyes in terms of not running for public office like this, and it's both the triumphs and the heartbreaks. Um, it was, but good. it's really powerful. It, yeah. I mean, she did it. Um, and her commentary. It's classic Rebecca. It is. <laughs> it, it, it has her feel. And it's so we're having the premiere November 10th um, at the Denver Film Festival. So we finally got it um, to, to be shown. Um, it's sold out in a I day bet. and a half for that day. I, I think there may be a few tickets left for the Friday showing, and then it's also digital online showing. So, you know, look, go to Rebecca Henderson's page or, you know, just look up Running With My Girls. And, and the trailer, I love the trailer. It's amazing. Yeah. I saw the whole thing. Yeah. And I don't watch, like, you all know I'm, I've got that personality where I don't sit still very long. And a certain somebody was also in it. A special cameo by <laughs> Brother Jack. <Hey. laughs> Running with my girls. Um, it's about an hour and a half. Yes. And, and I sat through the whole thing. Oh, oh, well, so there you go. Straight. That's how riveting it is. Straight. We will have a, um, even if you can't come to the movie, you didn't get tickets, we will have a reception both before and after on the 10th. Um, we will, uh, and then on Friday, people can just go and hang out. So it'll be at Bar Max, which is just right adjacent to the C Film Center on Colfax across the street from East High School. So the film will be at 7, the reception will be at 5.30. And then after the film, we'll go back to Bar Max and just, and just hang out and listen to folks and what, the, what they thought about the film. I got to get the Tan Tigress, Rebecca, in yeah. the free thing zone before all of this. But she's a little nervous about public. I know. Good for you, Rebecca. Like, we are still in a pandemic. so Two masks. Know, yeah. Two masks, one condom. 
<laughs> yes, oh. That's right, right. <laughs> no, I mean, people would try to be having two condoms, two, two masks, and, one condom. And, and that is not good, mm. right? You know, and so Tan Tigris, you did a great job. We're looking forward to, um, you know, the great success because if that's an indication of your talent, and it is, yes. you've got a lot more to do. And it speaks to the need for having... Uh, women of color filmmakers and also just you know like yourself brother Jeff telling our stories is really yes. important because as we know um, you know a lot of times mainstream media just doesn't cover right. uh, and cover from the inside especially well you know I got to ask Tosh um, Tosh um, you've been you've been always in the middle of community like working with the youngsters science stem food whatever like you are like a consummate community activist type person and you've been really paying attention to this they call it northeast park hill or something and right. like like the they in it the, the golf course stuff and you know they've had a situation to where the mile high income city the mayor has ponied up and made a private developer his client on our dime and all of that and you know, you all, I think, been having meetings and focus groups and workshops and all of that. Can you just bring us up to speed on what have you been up to and what's going on with the park? Yeah, so I spent a good bit of time um, in parks as a, a, a person who needed a place to take the, the three children, right, the, the three stair-step kids, they are so close in age. They have all this energy. Where do you take them? The park, mm -hmm. right? Down the street, um, up the street, around the corner. So spend a good, good amount of time um, being a user and in a person who's enjoyed parks both locally and um, kind of uh, out what we call backcountry um, parks started doing a little bit of um, youth. How do we get youth to really, the work was about care about parks and nature and outdoor spaces. Mm -hmm. Well, ha make it a place they can enjoy and have a good time and have plenty of access to and have the equipment that they need to fully enjoy it and explore um, outdoor spaces safely you were on the board with Le with, with with leslie like you're on a board like you like you've been like policy at this thing T to a degree i smile at that and i look at lisa because we were we were serving on the uh parks and rec advisory board at the same time and so um which felt like a battle especially mm -hmm. in um the time of COVID overlapping black lives matter and um so many of the things that we face on a daily basis, especially when we're outside trying to enjoy. When we were faced with COVID and needing to be home and people just broke out, where did they go? Two places. Mm -hmm. They went to the grocery store, right? Mm -hmm. And they went to the park. That's right. So much so, we closed parks so you can't drive you have to walk in i mean we made we there were some new things that have come up out of um this time that we've been sharing over the last 18 months in regards to um public spaces in the outdoors and in nature well i mean you, you guys have been super busy uh shanta i gotta run to you and because we're on this park thing um you and I were at the grand opening of a park on Fairfax. How about mm. that? <laughs> it was like, like, just think about the beauty of, mm -hmm. you know, the city acquiring a piece of land, a parcel of land for like $50,000 mm -hmm. and had an architect and they had everybody ponying up to, you know, do the park for free and there was just going to be a land swap and lo and behold, you all spent about a million dollars to get that wonderful park on Fairfax. And I'm like, Shanta, what am I watching? Mm. And, ha and had to fight for it. And I mean really fight for it. Because the promise was that the park was going to be on the other side. Mm. And that it was going to be much bigger. So there wasn't going to be a park at all. Wow. If we had not gotten involved. Well, let me ask you this, um, all three of you. I'm, me, personally, I'm um, yes on 301, no on 302. Absolutely. Y'all are like that? Like, we love that. Dr. Lisa Calderon? 
Yes. And so I'm, I'm first, my caveat, I'm here in my personal capacity. Personal, yes. yeah. Because um, like when you potent, like yeah. you potent. Like <laughs> yes, you potent now. When you potent, you got you to break it down. Exactly. You got to tell, tell the whites, you know, the ones, the legal folks and all that. Yes. Well, you, you, you got an opinion other than me? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and I still got First Amendment rights. Yes. Absolutely. Though the, yes. those in the city will try to absolutely refute that. Um, so absolutely, and um, this is a, a initiative that's very dear to me. There's there's several of them that are, but particularly because I feel like the the 301 versus 302, and yes, you know, um, on 301 and no on 302, um, they're often been couched as the battle of the black men. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. In fact, there was a, a story about this just recently that I read, I think yesterday, around, you know, the black male leadership are at, at you know, and so it's like, you know, Wellington Webb and, and Penfield Tate versus John Bailey. And I'm like, so where, what happened? John to Bailey the black will women? never beat Wellington E. Webb. He hasn't <laughs> and he won't. <laughs> Right. I mean, that, I'm just saying historical, you know, if it's I, about politics, if it's mm -hmm. about they're not going to beat they're not going to beat the big guy. As <laughs> no. a matter of fact, all the money was on. Um, what was his name? The D.A. Norm Early. Mm -hmm. And he was a lazy candidate. You know, the whites gave him all the money. He was all ponied up to win. He, oh, I don't put all the black folks gave him felonies. And you're like, you know, I'm about to get elected. <laughs> you know, I, I, I done proved I get on the Negro's helmet. Put me in. They was like, you're in, champ. You're in, champ. And then uh, the big guy, Wellington E. Webb, was like, <laughs> right. excuse me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Next thing you see, the next mayor of the Mile High City, Mayor Wellington E. Webb. So, right. yes, um, John Bailey, love him, like him, and all of that. But if it's about him against the big guy, uh, the big guy about to get on that <laughs> helmet. <laughs> but it, it, that but it, helmet. Just, it just reinforces how, once again, the media who doesn't know our community mm -hmm. just erased black women's voices mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. And yet it's been us who've been very vocal from the very beginning about, you know, this is our space, that this is not a battle between affordable housing right. and a golf course. Right. Or a grocery right. store. Or a grocery Say store. It. Say it. Right? And so I think that that was important for us to be here today is that, you know, we have been on the front lines of this issue um, and are fighting for our neighborhoods because it's all connected to housing justice mm -hmm. and, you know, the, the things that we've been fighting for for years. We don't see this as a separate battle. Right. Correct. Well, I'll tell you, we've got this incredible gathering of powerful women. It's something about patriarchy that always tends to erase the women. And it's real interesting because it's more pronounced now, mm -hmm. even in terms of what we want. Like, for example, um, justice for Elijah McClain. We mm -hmm. want to do something about the jail. We want to do something about health disparity. Right. What, mm -hmm. what do you? What do you? Want? I want menthol, nicotine, and 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 and, and I, I want a grocery store <laughs> where I can go buy them. I'm like, right. what are we doing here? Come right. on, um, come on, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Shanta, Shanta, why are you yes on 301 and no on 302? Let me just break this down. Mm -hmm. I am. Yes on 301 and no on 302 because, number one, like I said before, we need to breathe. We need to protect our open space. And this is the last uh, large parcel of green space um, in the area that, that we have. So why, why not protect it? I mean, what's, what's the point? And, and the fact that we have our own us bamboozling us mm. with this issue sticking us out there again they can always stick us out there to pull the wool over our people's eyes people who do not even live in the neighborhood that they claim to care so much about criticizing folks who do live in the neighborhood mm. and making this a racial issue that burns me up Wow. Um, that burns me up. What do you mean a racial issue? Why is it a racial issue? They're making this a black and white issue saying that, well, Northeast Park Hill is 
predominantly black. And <laughs> hold on, hold on, we hold need, on. Let's stop. Yeah, hold on, how hold about on just that? A second. And I, I, we hold need. On just a second. I got to stop <laughs> right here for just a second. Gosh, you've been around, Dr. Lisa Calderon. You've been around. Which, which part of the um, black <laughs> Northeast Park Hill are we talking about? Mm -hmm. Tosh, which one is it? Where, where, where is it at? Where that black community at you in know, Park Hill? I, I, here, here's the thing. We are being hyper gentrified. East Side Park Hill. Anywhere we reside. Everywhere. Right. Um, we watched it happen. We've been watching this happen around the city. Um, and so when we all... When we take that, how you know, loosely we agreed on Denver being a quote world class city, mm -hmm. the stage was set for the kind of battles that we're having, but the framing was so that we bought into the collective, you know, not, not all of we, but the majority, the people who voted. We bought into that, which set the stage for the, these exact battles that we're having right now. Because world-class city, which one? At what cost? Not a question that came to my mind during the, the voting for the current administration, first term, right? I heard world-class city, world-class city, world-class city. I did not know that that meant we would be looking at more condos on Welton Street, that wow. we would lose the heritage, the rich and robust heritage that we've all come to know yes. and be able to come back to, you know, mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. We're the only place we could live when our, our folks got here from the South, this, this mm -hmm. space here. Mm -hmm. So you look down Welton now and it's completely... Pretty much flat. It's a you concrete know, not, canyon. We've, mm -hmm. we've, lost, we've lost something. And if people think that we're going to lose something by continuing to have a conservation easement on space that's supposed to be in perpetuity, mm -hmm. then they haven't looked ahead. Right. And they haven't looked at the recent the recent past. Mm -hmm. We continue to lose ground, literally, land, without having any more access to that space. Mm -hmm. So in my neighborhood on the east side, if you decided you were going to move on up and go further east or something, you can't get yourself, it would be very challenging to buy back into my neighborhood that I now live in. Right. So once we lose ground, it's gone. Right, right, right. It, it's it's not coming back as affordable housing. Right, that's not affordable a affordable to whom? That's right. the question that nobody's been able to answer. And you know, having grown up um, blocks away from the golf course, you know, all my life, and I, and I hate calling it a golf course anymore because I see it as a park. I want it right. to be a park. Um, I've always wanted it to be a park. I can just think back, you know, driving past that land, you know, even as a child and going to events at the clubhouse, you know, and thinking, wow, it sure would be nice to be able to go out there and run around and play and, you know, and all those things and going to weddings and, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, the different events at the clubhouse right. and wishing we could go out and access that space. We have that opportunity now. Huh. We have that opportunity now. And that's one thing that the opposition keeps bringing up. Well, we've never been able to access that space. So what good is it doing? We have the potential to do a lot with it now. We have the potential to have everyone access that space and have it be a gathering point for, what, four or five different neighborhoods? Well, you know, Sean, I want to ask you this. Take advantage of that. Coming down Interstate 26th Avenue, where I see all those <laughs> yes on 301 signs mm -hmm. and no on 302, I don't see any neighbors saying, well, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a next door to the golf course over here. Would you please put some condos over there for me? Like, Nobody. Because when I come outside, Nobody. I'd like to see a parking garage. I'd like to see, I'd like to see some more development. I, want, exactly. I would love 8,000 more neighbors. No, no. They're and, not saying and, that on and, your end either, are they? No, not at all. And all those <laughs> signs that you see, those were the people that we were representing on the steering committee. Because the steering committee, the deck was stacked against mm -hmm. open space. Mm -hmm. It was so pro-development. And so without the few of us loud mouths on there, that they like to call us us bullies, mm. without the few of us who chose to speak up, 
these voices would not have been heard at all. And because there was no room. The conservation easement was not even on the agenda. We weren't even allowed to discuss it. Wait a minute. You weren't allowed to discuss it? No. And, and even, I mean, so just pausing there, the, the anti-black womanness for those who disagreed on that committee, um, you know, Shanta was called disrespectful for raising the concerns of the people that she was there to represent for her point of view. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, so I attended one of those meetings. They were all virtual. Mm -hmm. But during the public comment session that, that Councilwoman said the Baca's office had to fight to get, yes. to have a public comment How about that? Um, part of that. Um, I, I said, you know, I can't believe what I'm hearing. Like all of this talk about how much we love black people, mm -hmm. how, wh why we're developing affordable housing for black people and the shutting down of black women's voices, yes. um, was, you know, it, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It was very disrespectful. Yes. So, I, you know, I want to thank you for being persistent and consistent and Sandy as well. well thank you for standing Robinette. with us. Absolutely. And thank it's, you. It, I love so Sandy this is another Robin. way that we get a race. <laughs> I love yeah. Sandy. Yes. I love all oh, of y'all yeah. because you all stand up and fight. Like sometimes it's just good to know that when you're not in a meeting or you're not in a circle, there are people who are fighting for your interests. Right. Absolutely. And that's what white supremacy does. It always fights for the interests of the upper echelon white property owner male. Absolutely. You know, they don't, they don't have to show up. Like, for example, that's why nobody has seen Andy Klein. Mm. Hmm. Because Andy don't have to be in a room with no black folks. That's right. He don't have to justify what he's done with his money and his investment and all he that. He doesn't care he, to justify He it. doesn't have to. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, you never even really see power. Right. When you see power showing up in a room, you, about, you win it. Right. Because power sends them somebody else to represent right, right. their interests. <laughs> And you know, keeps, keeps us fighting us. with each other, right? Like, so you got, you got folks saying, you know, our good friends, and they pit us against each other, but they don't know we're all united because even after this, we're still community. That's exactly. right. You know, That's so right. we're always talking it together and all that, and there's, old, there's old, those that are looking from the outside saying, got them fighting, got them banging, got them scrapping, no, no, shooting, no. and let's take their stuff. But they always send someone to look like you. Yes. But if you say the name Andy Klein, everybody's like, who? Like they'd be turned into an owl. Who? <laughs> and then they next they turn around. <laughs> like and he's like, ha, 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 ha. you and, know. And there's and they send yeah. instigators too. Yes. Um, but coming back to that point about if they keep it, if they they keep us fighting each other, and they keep it as a black white binary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who does that leave out, right? I mean, you so so you justify leaving out right. the folks from the GES neighborhoods That's just right. across the way. This is not a parking. You leave issue. out, you know, Council District Nine. Yeah, that's across the street. Mm -hmm. That you say, you know what? We don't have to pay attention to Latino voices, right? Um, you know, it's just our voices that what matter. What does that mean, Doctor Lisa Calderon, when they say this should be a local issue? Like, what is the local issue? Like, who are the local that get to tune in? Well, I think we have to rephrase that. Every time they say this is a local issue, we should replace the word local with developer, right? Mm. That's what they really mean. That's what they mean. Right, because there are no hard and fast boundaries. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the conservation easement was voted on by all of the city of Denver, right? That's right. To have our nature right. parks that I love to walk in, that Denver has parks up in the mountains, mm -hmm. that, you know, the voters approve those kinds right. of initiatives or the people in mm -hmm. office to, to preserve those initiatives. That's so right. all of a sudden to say, this is our little block. Exactly. And no one around the block has any say so. That doesn't mean that community, local community doesn't have a voice. Mm -hmm. The folks who are saying that the loudest don't live over there. No. Right. And the developers don't live over there. And, and as a matter of fact, um, listen to this part. They can't vote on 301 or 302. Right. They, they can't, like, they can't, they don't have a ballot. Right. I don't know. Wow. I, think, I think one of them, their <laughs> spokesperson who always shows up in meetings, lives in 
formerly known as Stapleton Central right. Park. Yeah. Um, but you look at their pictures of West Side. There's no black women there. So all of this talk about we support black people. Right. Um, and so what do they have to do when you look at all of these faces of wealthy, rich, wealthy white men, and you you don't see any black decision makers mm -hmm. uh, there. But so what do they do? They contract out mm -hmm. with another group. Uh, to say, hey, we have some black representation. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I want to see. Like, it's, it's not that people shouldn't um, make a living, but be transparent about that, one. Right. And two, recognize that when you are going after us, we aren't getting paid. That's right. right? Mm -hmm. We aren't getting a contract out of this. We aren't getting a kickback from this. Not at all. Uh, we aren't having our office space subsidized, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Right. So, right. like, we are fighting truly for the people, and it doesn't mean just the people who live around mm -hmm. the Absolutely. golf course. Do you know what's interesting, and I, I want to ask you all's opinion of this, because everything that folks vociferously charged about Donald J. Trump, and yes, I said vociferous. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I hey. paid for that word. Hey. <laughs> you know, you graduate, they give you that receipt, I mean that diploma. Right. Yeah, I paid for that word. We just used the big but word it, but today. It, but, but, <laughs> nice usage. But, nice usage. But every, everyone who claimed ugliness about Donald J. Trump's politics, these folks do that and worse. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, listen to this. I want to break down a class, just a kind of a class analysis for a second. Donald J. Trump was brilliant. He is a purported billionaire, and even if he isn't, his identity is with billionaires. Uh -huh. Exactly. That's who he encompasses with. Uh -huh. Like, that's who he takes his cup to. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Here, he puts on a trucker cap, <laughs> a red trucker cap. And have poor people identifying. I'm talking about let's make America great again. We gonna bring back coal mining. Poor I'm people. Like, you you got working class yeah. folks yes. who are struggling, just want to make a living, just want to kind of be able to take care of their families, etc. All of a sudden, identifying with a wealthy white man because he put on a trucker cap. Mm -hmm. Now listen to this. Tell me the last time. When you rent one of these apartments on Welton Street, at some point you're going to outgrow an apartment and want to perhaps purchase a home and raise a family and have some space. Right. So all of these apartments that people are living in, that ain't permanent housing. Absolutely right. not. And you don't own it. That's right. You're just renting a little box in space for just a moment in time. Right. But here's the funniest thing in the world. You got folks that don't own nothing. Talking about, we need to do development because that's what we want. I'm like, them developers <laughs> don't identify with you on exactly. Section 8. That's right. Exactly. Like, them developers ain't talking about, let's get together and get you a house, bro. Absolutely right. Let's not. get together and get you. Man, listen, my name Andy Klein. I got a lot of money. Can I put a down payment down on your house? I'm like, ain't, you don't even see him, don't know his name, wouldn't no. see him if, you, if, 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 if he was in front of you. And you're talking about. No one three oh one. Like, <laughs> whose interests are you aligned with? These right. folks don't care about you. And I'm talking about those of you, and that's most of us or most people who can't afford to purchase a home mm -hmm. in the mile high income city. Right. Let alone rent an entire house. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not talking right. to, I'm not talking about that voucher that they're gonna give you or that right. you know, that list, you know, we'll go over here and go talk about exactly. Colorado coalition yeah. where the homeless might get you in or yeah. here's a... Um, you know, St. Francis Center. <laughs> now, now you, you a thousand feet deep in all of this. I'm out. Yeah. I'm with the developers because we need to have more development. And, I'm and like, developing the park. Stop it. And developing the Park Hill Golf Course land is supposed to solve all exactly. of that. What are they saying? What are, like, what are the developers saying? So all the saying? problems are going to go away. To, look, like, the <laughs> only thing they do for the masses in terms of housing is build penitentiaries. Like now, if you do, if you into the penitentiary business, well, they'll put up a piece of land and say we gon we gonna fill every one of these beds up with you. But for everybody who identifies with these folks that have everything and you have nothing, mm -hmm. you're no different than the folks that was like make America great again. That's right. Like, make America great again. Give me my red hat like Donald J. Trump. <laughs> That's right. <laughs>
<laughs> well, that's know. right. And it's a false promise, right? Because Sell they're saying, pipe dreams. you know, let's, we're going to give them some affordable housing. And, and that's where I want to get into the, the Yimbyism <laughs> argument, right? There's this, there's this false notion that if you just build more and more housing, it suddenly just evens everything out. The market will be happy. But we know that, uh, you know, folks who are struggling, um, working class people, low income people, the market has never leveled anything out for them. In right. fact, there is right. a study, and I'm going to put it in the chat, um, you know, that shows that market rate housing never helps us with subsidized housing, mm -hmm. never helps us with affordable housing. Right. So this whole notion uh, it, it, you know, Break down just, affordable housing because that's a trick term. It, it <laughs> well, is. and it's, it it's, it's become a co-opted term, right? Yes. So mm -hmm. when we have these these folks who are yelling at the top of their lungs, and, and so I just want to step back a minute to, you know, Shannon Hoffman, great job taking on the Yimbies because that used to be a movement, and it, you know, we can look back at San Francisco, but that used to be a movement that was about like pushing back at redlining, pushing back at the NIMBYs. Mm -hmm. But there is more recent analysis that actually there are two sides of the same coin because they are both fighting to silence our voices. Yeah. Uh, they are both um, talking about um, what they know what's best for our communities. And what makes it worse in some ways with the NIMBYs is they have co-opted our language, right? Mm -hmm. They have co-opted the language of racial justice to say, well, we are really fighting for you. And so I reference Shannon Hoffman because I've watched her and I've watched these, these, these tweets that have been going out by the Yimby people and the Yimby Denver people. And it's mostly, it's a very um, homogenous group white males who are shutting down women and are shutting down people of color when they bring up uh, mm. their false narrative that more housing equals more affordable housing. Right. What they're really saying is, we want housing for us we will use the language of even black women. They've even tweeted black women's words mm -hmm. back at us mm -hmm. um, to get what it is that they want. Right. And they're not working on the entire structure of racialized capitalism that is keeping wow. us. Hold on a second. Break that down. <laughs> racialized capitalism. capitalism. Right. So they're, they're relying on a free market theory that's saying build more, mm -hmm. and it will equalize for everybody. And we know that um, it's never benefited us, right? right? We aren't the, the property owners in mass. And in fact, one of the things that also was insulting that, that they put out there was they talked about Wellington Webb own, owning his house, and they talked about Penfield Tate owning the, the house. I own my house, right? And my, my family was one of the first black businesses in five points. Like, mm. home ownership is a way for black and brown communities to build wealth, is usually That's the right. main way for our families to build wealth. So to mock us mm -hmm. for owning our houses, and some of us mm -hmm. had to hold on to our houses through the recession and through predatory right. lending. That's right. So you don't get a right to talk about our home ownership that right. we've had in our family for generations who grew up here, um, and then for those of us who had it taken away through these predatory lending to make the way for people right. like them yes. who are saying that they are really fighting for our rights, but they, they have no racial analysis, they have no social justice analysis, except when it's convenient for them to make the point to build more housing for them. Mm -hmm. Dr. Lisa Calderon, oh, did yeah. I just hear you say that <laughs> someone in their argument used the fact that Penfield and Wellington are homeowners? Yes. <laughs> right. Look at their threats. What are we doing? Look There's a threats. war. There's a war on single family home ownership. She's right. I'm telling you, There's everyone who thinks that the mile high income city is being built for anyone other right. than investors, yeah. it's a colony. Thank you. Mm -hmm. When you start putting up all these apartments. That's transitional housing. Mm -hmm. there's, there's very few people that mm -hmm. say, you know what? I'd like to live in an apartment all my life. I'd like, <laughs> I want to be, I want to be in the same box with maybe two, three hundred people. That would be right. so cool. And Come it's, on. and it's not, you know, it's, and it's not even an argument between single family homes 
ownership because that got labeled as the NIMBYs who don't want anyone else in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Like we get, we get that problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That has a history of segregation and redlining mm -hmm. um, versus, um, you know, renters. And instead, that's where we get into this racialized capitalism where we need to, we have, we need to have different paradigms for talking about these more complex issues mm -hmm. because it's overly simplistic to say it's single family homeowners versus renters when we know that this is a city that by and large caters to uh, single family homeowners to the detriment of renters. We shouldn't mm -hmm. be pitted against each other, right? That's what being opposed to group living is about, mm -hmm. right? So we need to figure out how to unpack all of this without just essentializing it to it's just about a golf course they right. just want to keep a golf course and right. their homeowners right. right that is a false narrative and anytime we see that we need to push back we need to debunk that and one one just other thing brother jeff is there's also an element of sexism to the yimby argument so when i see people like shannon pushing back and i see the the yimby men saying you don't got an argument for that you know you know she didn't respond to that and they start to just pile right. yeah. on yeah you know, it's like, they, they try to jump already. on our friend Shannon Hoffman. Yes. So, mm. Shannon, you keep doing what you're doing, mm. right? Don't ever Shannon's let anybody in tell that you She's that in, you're not smart. Shannon, you're, you're over smart there enough. next door. You're up in there next door banging with them folks. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, next door. Next, next door. door. Some, I don't even go on next door anymore. I mean, that is a bad thing. Shannon up in next door. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 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 Shannon, next door Shannon the fight. up in there next door. You know, um, I I, I want to get into that question. Um, first of all, it's vote yes on three hundred one, no yes. on three hundred two. John right. Bailey will not beat the Honorable Wellington we E Webb once again. That's like that right. ain't gonna happen. Like it, it's it's just not gonna happen. Um, but I will say this: this is bigger than anything that we're even discussing. This ain't about no grocery store. This isn't about black ownership. This isn't about affordable housing. This is about an investor who purchased a piece of property that had a conservation easement right, on it that's right. and got stuck holding the bag right. because somebody peeped his move out at city council when they were going to try and vote it through in the consent yes. agenda. And Andy Klein purchased a piece of property like a car with a, with a, a, a salvage title on it <laughs> right. and thought he was just going to bring it yeah. across town, polish it up, and say, I... Who wants this nice car? No, exactly. you got a conservation easement on that. And now you're trying exactly. to get everybody to do all these different things. Mm -hmm. um, that's what it's about, ultimately, right. is somebody spent some money and they're trying to maximize their profit like they should in, per ter in terms of their system. But they can't do it off of my back, my, right. my dollars right. and breaking the rules. That's what it's about. That's and right. it's about... It's about corruption, too. So that's mm -hmm. why Thank if you. You, you're only looking at housing and you don't look at how we got there, right? The mayor's office made a secret deal and the city attorney's office with a developer, right? So they treated them like the client right? behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, that's every anything that comes out of that fruit of the poisonous tree mm -hmm. is bad, yeah, right? That's right. And yeah. so we, you can't just say, oh, but we're going to get housing of, out of it. It doesn't right. matter no. if it came from a corrupt deal. Right. Who cares? That's right. right. And that's the MO for this administration, oh. unfortunately, because that's what happened at Fairfax. That was a backdoor deal, too. Our, our, but this our, is a wonderful, our wonderful councilman, Chris Herndon, just had his little grubby hands that's all in there. Christopher Columbus huh, turned into you. <laughs> No, yeah. no, Christopher, so Hunt, Christopher, Christopher Hunt, Herndon is going to run for mayor. Oh. Like, and he's got a good chance you know at it, too. Like, if you look at how white Lanta mm. has become so, so white, mm. and you look at a black man who will not go to the Hiawatha Davis Senior Luncheon or even support it in his Won't own even district. support in his district. But then turns around and doing all them dog park tours and oh, all them yeah. bicycle peddling and oh, all that yeah. stuff. That dude's getting him some votes. And you, oh, yeah. and you know what the, the <laughs> most important piece of legislation he's known for in all the years he's been in office, which, which is lifting the pit bull ban, right? <laughs> so it's like we're not going to talk about people. We're going to talk about dogs. <laughs> I love dogs. I'm a dog owner. But, <laughs> but if that's your most important piece of legislation, that's a problem in all your years in office. Yeah. And I am very worried about our next mayor's race. Well, right? when, he said, when he said Stapleton good, not bad, I'm like, oh, my goodness. Um, hold on. <laughs> 
Vote yes on 301, no on 302. I got to constantly Wait, let you right. know that. Um, right. If you don't get anything, and this is going to be low voter turnout, yeah. and I can already tell you, intelligent people who are, and just go talk to them. Mm -hmm. Ask them. Ask anyone where they at on 301 or 302, and if they are not a principal investor on that particular piece of property, they like, man, please. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing wrong with being a developer. But all these developers aren't piling up to support another developer because they all and they compete against each other also. But the average person who owns a home or rents a home or just wants to have a place that they can walk by and some air they can breathe, yeah. ask them if they want another parking garage. Right. <laughs> and like say, hey, man, what's up? You need a grocery store? Right. Look, I'm like, got a grocery store in here. Right. Like, it's like, that's what I want. Like, I want justice for Elijah McClain. No, you don't. You want grocery store. You want a grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I want to understand why a, a school board race is, has cost five, uh, half right. a million dollars for yeah. a volunteer position. No, no, no. You want grocery store. <laughs> like, no, 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 really. I want to, I want to know why, you know, you got folks that are are, are being targeted with nicotine and menthol cigarettes and cools and Salem's and Newport's while yeah. the white folks is pulling all that stuff back. You know, you, you want to be able to breathe because COVID is attached to your ability yes. to breathe yeah. and we're dying more than any. No, I want grocery store. <laughs> like, right, I mean, it gets ridiculous at some point. Yeah, but I do yeah. want to get into some of the points that might be uh, differing from what we're saying. David Martin said, we, well, we did have a conservation easement expert come and talk about easements in right. general. But beyond that, we were told discussions on the Park Hill Golf mm. Court land easement was off limits right. and that its presence was immaterial to the vision. Right. Like, and we had to fight for that expert to be able to come and present. Right. We had to fight for that. Right. Really? Yes. Tooth and nail. Yeah, they don't, they, didn't, they don't give you anything. I mean, and even, you know, in, Tosh in her introduction was very humble. When we were on the Parks and Rec Board, because this is all connected, right? Yeah. Um, that we had to fight just to have a Black Lives Matter solidarity statement after the George Floyd protests. We had to fight the Parks and Rec Board mm -hmm. uh, to get that. They eventually got there, but since we've stepped off, I'm sad to hear mm. that there, there have been... Um, stepping backwards at the kind of the strides that we've that we made to have more community voice right. have been rolled back. So it's it's just a reminder that we have to constantly fight right. for progress. Right. And when we and we have to be vigilant. Yes. And when we stop being vigilant, those same powerful forces come in. All of those people who are appointed on the Parks and Rec Board by City Council, right? You start feeling special mm -hmm. right. when you get appointed. You start feeling right. special, mm -hmm. and no one else should have a voice because I, you know, right. I fought to get get on this seat, and mm -hmm. so you don't get to talk. You know, that all gets rolled back when we we either leave, we move on, or or move on to other things. Um, but we need other people to be able to keep that that baton going right? right this is a marathon uh, and we yes. have to keep fighting for it or else we will go backward that's right well i could tell you all um we want to say thank you to everyone that contributes to this platform we are powered by the people seven donations a day brotherjeff.com i like to say that seven donations a day and powered by the people we're right? powered, yes. by, the people. powered by the people that's like the people are going to win the because people. the average person just knock on the door and say um would you like them trees in that open space in that area or you want yeah. another you want to you want to parking lot they were like ah give me a parking lot yeah <laughs> across the street yeah. from me and how excuse Not. me how many more neighbors would you like oh i right. love density. oh my like, god like for example you you know don't we ain't got enough oh. Man, listen it take me 38 hours to get from colorado boulevard to monaco thank um, you and y'all ain't even halfway thank you. done building it's like these buildings you. ain't it's even true. filled can you i have some mow that i right. want some more that and what else you want grocery store <laughs> But, but here, here's something interesting. The more buildings, the more parking lots that I see coming up, the more people that look like me that I see unhoused. Very intriguing to think that you're going to get affordable housing, a grocery store, a parking lot, and no one else has had it in all this time. Is it magic? It's not magic. It's a trick. Yeah. 
it's well, just it's a all tree. That land, if you got 155 acres and you ain't got no food, that's a problem in and of itself. Right. Give you, what you want? Here's a bag of seeds. Get over there and start planting. <laughs> like, <laughs> since it, I mean, you want to be all, go plant. <laughs> Thank right. you. Go, How about forth, it? go forth and plant. And you want right. to put some cows over there, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we could get you some cows and, you know, we're going to get you some fishing. We're about to be self sustained <laughs> <laughs> so How Dr. about it? Like Dr. Right. Lisa Calderon, this city, the mile high income city, mm-hmm. is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna give you a I'm gonna give you a statistic. Okay. I already talked about the point that at one point we were we were dubbed we had the worst air quality in the world. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Do you know if you look in the paper today, we made another top ten mm. um, entry? Oh Lord. I, I heard coming over here that we made another top list for um, for the for the lack of affordable housing that was rivaling once again oh, the wow. the East Coast, but uh, the East and the West Coast. I got a um, better one. Okay, let's let's hear it. Top ten for rats. Oh, oh yeah. What? Oh my God. That's a new thing. <laughs> Oh, that's God. because they're being gentrified Chicago, too. Chicago's number one. <laughs> they're being run out. <laughs> and you know they just sat, shut down the the oh the, the um, you know the park over here because they said rats and yes, stuff. Exactly. But oh. but now it ain't just that. It's the num- This the, you're now in the top ten for having rats. Oh my god. And it's a big surprise. That's what comes with being a world class city, people. Mm. We didn't know that was part of the package. <laughs> I heard world class city. I was like, world class. We got rats. Yeah, rats. <laughs> Real That's a part and, of and, and, and when they put that, I was like, "Are you talking about the ones in office?" Right. But I mean, <laughs> no, they're talking about literal rats. <laughs> I was like, what exactly like, are you talking um, about? Can you define rats for ten points, please? Because <laughs> uh, we've been on, we got some rats. Like we, they, these men, we got some rats. Yeah. 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 But uh, vote yes on three hundred one, no, no on, on three hundred two. 302. Um, ladies, keep fighting. And I got some more that I want to talk to you about. Um, there is a gentleman, what's his name? And it's going to come up because he has a good point and he, always, he wants to talk to me about, let me go into my, my box and see where he's at because his name is going to be in there. Oh, uh, where is it at? I'm going to find it. I'm, I'm going to find it. But the point being is there are those who say that we need to have, Shahada, thank you. You coming back? Not today. I'll be back this week though. You coming back? <laughs> she cut her hair. I love it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Robert Greer. Robert Greer. Anyone know Robert Greer? Robert Greer. Give me a little bit background because Robert and I are going to have a conversation and he's um, talking a lot about uh, the need for um, more, more housing or more, you know, I'll get into some of the things that he's saying, but what, what, what are your thoughts? Um, I believe he's an attorney or he mm-hmm. has some, mm-hmm. some insight into to law. We were going to talk a little bit about easements, et cetera. Uh, but he has another position in terms of there does absolutely need to be more housing here. Right. So, um, so I, my understanding is, is Robert is an eviction attorney, so he gets these issues. Um, he gets that, you know, when we have the displacement issues, et cetera, right? So he is fighting on, the, um, on those lines. But he's also one of the people I'm talking about who's being dismissive of mm. other voices. And mm. so you just have to watch the exchange between him and Shannon, right? Oh, he, him, and Shannon are the ones going at it? Yeah. So ah. go look at the Twitter thread, uh, right? So, and so part of my point is, is that we don't, we're, there are so many things that we agree upon, right? That the, the inequities, the structural inequities in this city need to be challenged. Mm-hmm. Um, but... But let's not use the struggles of poor people, the struggles of, of people of color, and turn them against us. And right. quite frankly, the struggles of women. Like, it's not useful to tell us that we are not smart on issues, that we don't right. know our issues. Like, we've been hearing that our entire lives. So let's take that off the table. And this is one of the things that I'm, why I'm saying, you know, that the yimbyism that I've been seeing around this issue yeah. has been inherently racist and inherently sexist. Right. So when you are using the same tools that you are criticizing the NIMBYs for Mm. and you're you're using it against who should be your natural allies uh, and you are 
basically limiting our voice mm -hmm. to also speak, yeah. then, you know, then that's when we see yimbyism and nimbyism that they are two different sides of the same coin when you start using those types of uh, tools inappropriately against us. You know, what? You, uh, I clearly, you know, um, am listening when I hear the, the attack on women. You know what I mean? Just listening to you all because I get a chance to hear the filter in terms of how things are landing with you as opposed to saying, what you mean the Redskins is offensive? That's a football right. team, and I've been a football. I've been playing football since I was two years old. How dare you say the Redskins are offensive? And I'm saying, well, that's what they they told you. Like, don't people right. get the right to tell you what offends them? Exactly. Well, and let me let me just using that example too. You know, talking about like we're all on indigenous land, and so for some people who come into this 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 argument it really is about the, the historical dispossession of land that is the continued legacy of today. Mm -hmm. So for those of us who are fighting pr to protect Mother Earth, and then we have the Yimby guys saying, you know, basically we don't care about that. That's not important right. today. What's important is more housing because, again, they can be housed. Um, <laughs> It, it, it flattens the whole argument. It, it invisibilizes people who have been silenced and had their land stolen, and, and they don't see that within. They don't put these things in a historical context and a racial context and a sociopolitical context except to use our words against us. Well, I can tell you, everyone, uh, vote yes on 301, no on 302. It's going to be a low voter turnout. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and call this. 301 is going to, um, it's going to be successful because Absolutely. folks want a place to breathe and then like the average person doesn't even get it like they don't they're not into it like they're not trying to figure out what the zoning is of that particular building they're just right. trying to pay their their right. high cost of living and have right. a, at some time and they're not following this and you're like 301 302 you're like you you want it you want another parking lot and they're like i don't think right. so no. like you you want a grocery store? I go to the one like right around the corner. Uh -huh. Like I got a grocery store. I've been right. going to the grocery store all my life. Well, can you walk to it? Can you walk anywhere? You don't right. need to be walking now. Exactly. Um, but with that, <laughs> with all this traffic, um, but but with that being said, <laughs> ladies, um, Robert Greer says he wants more housing on the golf course. What's wrong with that, Shanta? The problem with that is. Where will our refuge be when all of the surrounding land is developed? That area is, is touted for development mm -hmm. all around the golf course. Mm -hmm. Where will we go? What, what will be our reprieve? Where are we going to breathe? One of these days, we're going to greatly appreciate that space being there. Mm -hmm. We're going to need it. So that's what I say. I, I don't, I don't, I, I, I respect his point of view, but where does he live? Mm. Uh -huh. Well, Good and, point. And, and I, I'd like to know because I, I, I don't mm. want, I don't want that area congested any I mean, more than it already is. Like Jeff said, it takes forever just to get out of the neighborhood. Right. You know, um, Tosh, um, we're going to give you 60 acres. Like we, we we're going to give you 60 acres of 60 land. It's all acres. like, 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 you know. <laughs> that may like, or may like not include Shanta, the detention I'm going to give you 60 acres, <laughs> and, and you're going to be able to have that. Tosh, you, I'm, I'm giving you 60 acres. So first of all, our people worked land and were given nothing, mm. right? There's nothing in, in recent history that would convince me that this, quote, affordable housing is going to be accessible to my people. So there is a distinction between affordable housing and low-income housing. That's right. I believe that affordable housing is based on that great black and white. I know there are more, there are more folks in the world in our, in our community to consider, but the gap that wealth gap that exists, affordable is about what white people earn, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. this, you know, very yeah. different than what black people work in two jobs right. and still can't buy groceries That's right. That's every right. month. 
So, so first of all, that framing, I think, is tricky. It's mm-hmm. tricky framing. Yeah. You're saying affordable, but you don't mean me. That's right. And you don't mean my, the people that look like me. You don't mean people of color. You don't mean single parents or single income households that are led, you know, households for um, BIPOC. So, first of all, that's my concern is that we are carrying, once again, working the land for free. Mm -hmm. As you pointed out before, none of us own it. None of us will have a real decision once we we actually sign off on affordable. Mm -hmm. And then we realize when it's too late, that didn't mean us. So mm-hmm. the framing is, hasn't been unpacked completely. What does that mean in, in the state of Colorado? And then what does that mean in Denver mm-hmm. to have affordable housing? So I don't think we're going to have access. Well, you know, um, Dr. Lisa Calderon, I've got one for you also. And this is why Robert Greer is going to vote yes on 301 and no on 302. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to break this down, Shanta. Just watch. I'm about to right. break this down. I hear you. Robert Greer is going to vote yes on 301 and no on 302 because he said he wants housing on the golf course. But according to uh, our good friend Sandy, he lives in South City Park. So based on the logic of the other side, Robert, this is none of your business. This ain't even your business. <laughs> right. It's none of your business, buddy. And he has a golf course, right? <laughs> He could go to City Hall. Oh, oh, hold on, did I break it down? That's it. Like, <laughs> like, Robert, we don't care what you want. It's none of your business. That's you're in right. South City Park. Mm-hmm. You, you, certainly you're not going to do the Donald Trump thing and vote against your interests and get like, like the poor folks because you're more intelligent. <laughs> Robert, you're an attorney. Mm. You spend a lot of money for that receipt. I mean mm. that diploma and, uh, and that access. <laughs> and, and you spend a whole bunch of money. <laughs> And you did not fall for Donald J. Trump, the billionaire who put on a trucker cap like he's working class right. and he, he toting, toting, you know, um, all kind of commerce, interstate and doing all that. And at the truck stop trying to take a shower, you know, as he gets right. to the other yeah. city, you know, you didn't fall for that, Robert. And now that I know you want housing. And the other side is saying, Robert, this ain't none of your business. I know you ain't about to side with some folks that say, Robert, this ain't none of your business. I don't care what you want. Because that ain't politics, is right. it? That's right. That's not right. right. And, and everybody wants housing. So that's not even the argument, right? right? So that's another false narrative. Yeah. We all want housing, right? The, mm-hmm. the, that's part of the, the battle with uh, having unhoused folks. So th- this is the other piece of it. As... As these cities get richer, and, and Tosh, thank you, like we're a world-class city with the world-class problems, right? And, and part of that is our homelessness issues have gone up in a world-class city. Right. Yes. As uh, uh, incomes go up, mm-hmm. as wealth yes. disparities go up, mm-hmm. as the mm-hmm. lack of affordable housing becomes more scarce, mm-hmm. right? All of those things are compounded. And on top of that, it's also on our labor, right? This is this is largely labor, uh, black and brown labor, yes. Latino labor that are building the houses that they want, the buildings that they want. That's right. So you right. know, all of that goes into the mix. And then my response to uh, you know building houses on golf course when I walk up in the mountains, which is like to me the closest place that I get to God, right? Yeah. That that you just there's just something that comes over you in terms of being in a very spiritual place of of seeing something greater than yourself. Yes. Um, and just being in the silence of it all, it's just yes. beautiful and moving. And every time I go up there. I am grateful to, for example, our Denver Mountain Parks, to those people who have the foresight, who yes. were long gone, aren't alive anymore, yeah. who wanted to leave something for the rest of us, who said it, it didn't make sense to build all, you know, on every place that you possibly can. Exactly. That there is beauty that we have to preserve. There is nature and land that we have to preserve. Yes. So I am grateful to those visionaries who were also white men, 
right, who said we needed to preserve this right. land for everybody and right. make it accessible to everybody. And not everybody has the privilege of taking a car to go up to the mountains because right. I saw exactly. that on a Yimby thread as well, right? Right. You just, if you want to have open, fresh air to breathe, yeah. Yeah. just get right. in your car and go to the mountains. Go to the mountains. Right? And I was one of those who, who grew up poor and learned to appreciate nature by being in Girl Scouts. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, not everybody has the opportunity. And so we need to be able to take our kids to the and I agree with you Shanta that is a park to me it is right? I'm not a golfer <laughs> absolutely <laughs> absolutely and I thought about you know when Tosh was talking about you know during COVID you know what people gravitated to people gravitated to the Park Hill Golf Course yeah using it as park space hmm. correct by the droves Illegally, even. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, like, you know, it, they amazing. were there. They're they still were. there. I mean, to be with the ladies today, you get to hear the voices that, you know, you probably haven't even heard on this issue. No, you because know. it's been a battle of black men. It's the battle of black the media. <laughs> but, you know, the, the, the big guy is going to beat John Bailey. It's, it's, it, the, John Bailey's going down once again by the big guy. And let me just mm. tell you why. Because he has to, because we're talking legacy. Mm. Think about this. Robert wants housing. <laughs> Investors want to maximize their dollars. Right. The average person like Brother Jeff just wants to know what his $2 million investment is worth and what it meant. Exactly. And so many years ago, the big guy went before the voters and said, he looked in the crystal ball and he said, at some point all this development is coming this way. We're going to be surrounded by concrete. Five Points is going to be a concrete canyon. Everybody's going to be looking for a little plot of dirt to see how tall they can go because yeah, they yeah. can't go out. They exactly. want density. And the reason they want density is not because they love people. It's because they love the revenue that a lot of people generate, right. whether you have money or not. If you don't have money, you're going to get tickets, fines, and penalties. If yeah. you do have money, you're going to have tax revenue that's going into the coffers. Mm -hmm. And so, with that being said, all of the greedy developers, they get all of these incentives to come to your town mm -hmm. to do all these different things to pillage your land and assets. The Honorable mm -hmm. Wellington E. Webb obviously saw that coming and said, for the future, we're going to put into perpetuity a place where that can't take place. That's right. Because correct. there's going to be someone like Robert that's going to come by <laughs> some time in the future that already has a house. Yeah. <laughs> you know, somewhere else. Somewhere else. else. <laughs> and yeah. says, we need more housing. When's the last time anybody said, I'm looking for a house? I'm looking, I'd like to purchase one, but I want one for everybody too. Like, right. and we, I want it at closing. I want it to be everybody at closing with me. Yeah. But now all of a sudden you got individuals saying, I want some more housing. What are you saying? I got some more families in Connecticut that I want to move right. over, over to here. Like, what are you saying? Right. Because most of the folks that don't have a house here is because they can't afford a house. That's right. Folks aren't out here in these tents because they're saying, I want to live in a tent. Exactly. Right. And, and man, can you get me a tent? Where's, man, where are you, where you go shopping? REI. I mean, they got this cool <laughs> little joint that I can put, like, right in my tent. What color is your tent? Man, what color is your tent? And so, yeah. you know, who no. is saying, who is actually saying, I want some more housing. Right. I want some more people. I want, like, I don't, doctor. It, it no. isn't just about more housing. It's about the type of housing. I think that's what we are saying, right? Yeah. And so, you know, when Shannon was, you know, in this uh, Twitter battle with, with Robert Greer, and he, you know, and it's like, no, you know, you, you don't know your, your stuff when she's talking about the vacant apartment rate, et cetera. What oh. we're talking about fundamentally is the lack of the type of housing that we need. Right. If you continue to build, so like the luxury housing of today, which is basically market rate housing, mm -hmm. the luxury housing of today, according to Yimby's, right. is the affordable housing of tomorrow. Well, Robert said that he grew up, and, and Robert, we're not piling on on you because I'd like to talk to you. Because it, I, I think you bring another point of view that needs to be heard. Oh, yeah. You know, um, but it's hard to hear, like, I want more housing. Like me, I don't wake up and say, I want more housing. I want more people in houses. Right. Right. 
Because because yeah. this whole <laughs> argument about we need more housing, you got a lot of empty housing right yes. now that Tons can house some individuals that are in these streets. Tons and people of buying second houses, <laughs> you know, Tons right? and vacation like, houses. Yeah, so this is not an issue of we we want you know don't want more people. There's a lot of vacant dwellings yes. everywhere you go. Yes. And for everybody who's saying I want to do something about these unhoused neighbors, well, if you really want to, just put them in all these vacancies. Yeah. But you're saying. I don't want to do that. I want to ship them somewhere else. What most folks are saying is I want to make some money. Right. I want to maximize my dollar. I want, to, I want more growth and development. I want more investment. Mm -hmm. That's what they're saying. When you got one house and you're living in it, but you got three or four more, you got investments. That's right. right. And, you when, know, and when, that's I what hear, right. when I hear Yimby's then saying, I want more low income housing, then okay. Let's let's have that conversation. Not that's not what that. they're saying. Right. They're not right? Say they it. are not fighting for low income housing. Right. So Correct. that's that's what I'm saying is let's be specific. When you say affordable housing, right. you mm -hmm. are talking about a specific housing that suits you mm -hmm. exactly. and your demographic. Right. You are not talking about more affordable housing Correct. for low income people, right. for working class people, right. for people even not bringing in an income, right? For mm -hmm. unhoused people. Mm -hmm. And if and if you know and when it is brought up, it's in a tokenistic kind of way, right? Mm -hmm. So you're either in the fight full on or you're not. Right. You know what's real interesting? And before we get out of here, again, everybody, don't forget, go to brotherjeff.com, make a donation of any amount, and don't forget about the great Leanne Wheeler's favorite option, Cash App, dollar sign, J-E-F-F-F-A-R-D. <laughs> She's a Cash App person because she can't stand PayPal. Because of their treatment and all, they like, you got conscious folks about their dollars. You know what I mean? I'm not giving you nada. Exactly. Yeah. Not, is there another option? Like, yeah. But the point being is, um, Robert Greer, and I, 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 I like you, I love you, I want to talk more about you, but yeah. growing up on Section 8 and food stamps is something Mayor Hancock did also. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so none of that is like, none of that yeah. gets, none of that makes me cabbage patch. Like, right. you know, because... <laughs> <laughs> you know, none of that makes me want to wobble, wobble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because the person who's making it possible or impossible for people to have a decent living and to just have a workable wage and a place to live is a person who grew up unhoused on food stamps in Section 8. So all that, like, who was the brokest thing don't right. matter. Because right. once folks start chasing them dollars, it. once they start getting that bag, they're right. trying to get some more investment. They're trying right. to grow up, get their kid in another place, and they get them symbols and all that. So the point being is, everybody mm -hmm. out there, you know what a conservation easement is. Mm -hmm. And the point that I was making is, the great Honorable Wellington E. Webb saw mm -hmm. this coming, and he said, that will not happen here That's because right. there's going to be a place where people can just have open space. That's and right. so if you want a house, Fine, and you want some more housing, go find a place that ain't got an easement on it. Exactly. And as Candy has Thank said, exactly. that conservation easement is leverage, right? And you take yeah. that away, then we've lost our leverage against a very wealthy and powerful developer yes. who has given contributions to this, uh, to this mayor. And even though people say, well, you know, 1500 or whatever it is, 1300 doesn't buy you much. Yes, it does. No, it buys yes, you it influence. Does. It's not the dollar amount. You are giving a signal to the mayor that I'm willing to do business with you. Yeah. It's a quid pro quo mm. oftentimes when you are in bed with a developer that, that you had a sweetheart deal with in a back room. Yeah. That's what we are talking about, right? right. So this, the whole deal feels dirty. And so to be able to just dismiss that is problematic. Wait, so, wait, mm -hmm. so Dr. Lisa Calderon, I think Robert feels like he's being piled on. Yeah, and, and, and you know what, Robert, you're, it's not, it's he said not he just. He feels like it. Right. He feels like it. It, it feels like a pop. Well, he said, I'm, no, and, listen, I'm here to advocate for more housing for my clients who are getting pushed out because rents are rising by 20% every year because supply is artificially restricted. We know. It's developing the we golf course. We know. We know that, right? And that's what <laughs> right. I'm saying is we're not arguing different points on that. Not at all. Right. But when, when Yimbies are piling on to, to women like Shannon and to others who have a different point of view, you know, what I'm saying is let's cut that out 
And you're right. It's not just Robert, right? Mm -hmm. Go to the whole Yimby there. When we got a millionaire who built a mansion, and he's one of the main Yimby people talking about more housing, mm -hmm. who yeah. also was a developer. When's right. the last time you saw somebody who had a house on the golf course that said, I want some more houses on this golf right. course? Like, isn't that the exclusive right. token, like, I'm yes. on the 19th hole or something? It's right. Like, what, if you got everybody <laughs> around you on the 19th hole, then you're just back in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know. Yeah. But <laughs> Robert is fighting for his clients. Yeah. Great. So are we. So and we're are fighting we. for our families. That's right. We are fighting for our community. That's why I'm like, it's a false narrative to say we, are, we do not want affordable housing. Right. But be specific. Mm -hmm. And how a deal gets done, and you should know this as yes. an attorney, yes. how a deal gets done matters. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, if there's a conservation easement into perpetuity, like... Can't you fight for your clients or if you like housing or you want to buy something or build something? Aren't there other plenty of places to do that? Plenty. Like, maybe plenty. not here anymore in the Mile High Income City. There might be a places and parcels. But why is the Park Hill Golf Course such a dynamic conversation right. that we all got to talk about? Like, that's the last piece of oxygen. Right. Because it is. And, right? this, and this is not. <laughs> and, and development of that land is not going to solve the issue. Right. Wow. It's not. It's still going to be an issue. Well, I'll tell We're you We're still going to have to fight to resolve the issue. I want to give you all the final word, and I'm going to start with Dr. Lisa Calderon, and we're going to work our way around there. And I want you to talk to someone who may be on the other side of the issue, because most of us are over here. We're on, I'm yes on 301, no on 302. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely nothing you could tell me by the time I turn in my ballot, like, Nothing I'd like all. to hear it, but I'm pretty sure I, I'm set. <laughs> you know, I'm like the like the elder said, I'm set in my ways. Like I'm, I'm, like there's nothing you can. Well, you know, we need you want a grocery store, like parking lot. You know, more neighbors. Yeah. You need some more people. Like you need some more people. Like I don't know what the argument is, but Dr. Lisa Calderon, I want to start with you. Can you tell us um, why you're yes on 301, no on 302? and really direct that to someone who may be on the fence or doesn't know what this is all about and perhaps might not even be turning their ballot in. Yes. First of all, we forgot to give our plug to Chubby Curls, which I'm a Chubby Curls user. Hey. Manushka. Hey. Wonderful product. So, okay, there's that. <laughs> um, that we need to clear out the noise. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, we are all neighbors. And at the end of the day, we all want affordable housing. Mm -hmm. But we need to be very specific on what it is that we are describing and who we are fighting for. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, the Yimby movement came out of the, as a pushback to NIMBYs who wanted to keep out people of color, immigrant communities, etc. And it was a noble cause, but what they have turned into is an a extension of what they were fighting against. So my pitch to you is come back to your roots. Talk, center the voices that you claim to be fighting for and stop acting like you're speaking for us when you are talking over us. Mm, yeah. fundamentally we do want the same thing mm -hmm. in terms of having a livable city but we also have to unpack what that means and who we are building for and and finally acknowledge the labor the black and brown labor that has built the city and will continue to build the city that don't get a seat at the table that you don't have in your groups that you don't have in your your Facebook feeds and your Twitter tagging, right? Mm -hmm. How are you talking to those people who are struggling to live in this city or probably can't afford to live in the city and right. are still building the homes that you want? Right. right. So get, wow. back, get back to a place of balance and stop acting like you're smarter than the rest of us. Dr. Lisa, hey. call the wrong. Right. Like... <laughs> like I feel real good around the people I'm surrounded with. Like, I can go to sleep at night and get a good night's yes. sleep. You know, like, there's nothing in my soul or my mm. conscience that be kicking me at night. Be like, you know, but before Dr. Lisa Calderon, go ahead and announce that you're running for mayor. Hurry. 
So we're turning it over to Sean. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Come on, um, man. I was waiting. I was waiting. <laughs> the same question, and, and everybody you already know. I'm I'm still rolling with Dr. Lisa Calderon. I'm still I'm still on that bus. Absolutely. Like, so like, and I know a lot of us are. I sure hope she runs. Um, but we'll see. Um, that being said. Again, same question to you, Shanta, and then uh, Tasha. I would want um, those who um, are undecided to understand that um, this is not a black and white issue. Mm -hmm. This is not a Northeast Park Hill issue. This is a human rights issue mm. for the entire city of Denver. Um, and this is, this is an issue that needs to be voted on by the entire city because the entire city paid to have this land preserved in perpetuity as open space. And don't believe the hype. It does not have to remain a golf course. It can be preserved for other uses in uh, what am I trying to say <laughs> Just to, to, to those be, who might it, be saying that they don't know be, where to vote or it how can to be vote. preserved for other uses um, in conjunction with the the uh, parameters of the conservation easement it does not have to remain a golf course so there are those who are trying to sell that that narrative that it can only be a golf course don't believe the hype mm-hmm doesn't have to remain a golf course. Um, it, it can be used as, as park space. And so understand that there are those who are selling pipe dreams uh, to the community to make a buck. This comes down to a developer trying to make a dollar. That's it. All That's right. it. Do your homework. Do your research. And then come to your own conclusion. I guarantee you'll be on the right side of this and vote yes on 301 and no on 302. There after you, you are. do your homework. There it is. Mm -hmm. Tosh. Okay, and don't just do your homework now. I echo everything Dr. Lisa and Shanta have shared. Don't just do your homework now, but ask yourself, is it perpetuity? Mm. Have we reached it? Because why are we okay. having this conversation, right? That means forever. And so <laughs> I would ask people to think about what is at stake. What have they lost by buying into the world-class city vision? And what's at stake mm -hmm. if they continue to blindly um, think about, and maybe not blindly, but, but don't dig don't do their homework, mm -hmm. right? And don't think about beyond this moment, what does this mean? Right. If they're not unpacking, as Dr. Lisa was talking about. So basically, um, it's soul searching time for us, for us again. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope we don't stop. What does it look like, not even 10 years down the line? What does it look like five years down the line? You know, Michael wants to ask you to or ask us, uh, what are your thoughts about Westside selling off a portion of Loretto Heights to a builder that is um, making 4% of the 322 units affordable? Well, pay attention. <laughs> pay attention. Look at their track record. Mm -hmm. Look at their track record. They're showing you right there what they intend to do. And all these promises that they're making, they don't have to stick to any of them. We don't have anything in writing. And any these these good neighboring agreements that are supposed to be uh, in place, you know what, if they sell, whoever, whoever takes over that land does not have to honor those. So we have no guarantees. We have no guarantees. Laredo Heights does, had no guarantees. Look what they got. Well, I could tell you all this. Take a lesson. I'm not against all developers. I'm sitting next to one right here. <laughs> <laughs> the great Leanne Wheeler is in the free thing zone. The great Good Leanne day, Wheeler. Everybody. Guess what? Woo, You're a developer. Uh, yeah, a manner of speaking for sure. And see, <laughs> 50 and, and, units. And you developed units. Permanent supportive housing. And you went up against uh, big time politicians and neighbors who didn't want. Mm. They, they didn't want the clientele. Did not. And so when folks talk all they of this. They were the NIMBYs they, versus yes. the YIMBYs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you've, you've already gone through a lot of this. Yes. 
for sure. And there's a lot of false narratives that folks that don't even really have anything to do with it are getting caught up. I mean, I mean, in terms of the face of it, you know sure. what I mean? Like you got black folks with their jaws all tightened up and they're mad about this. And most of them can't even afford to live anywhere near the mm-hmm. mile high income city. Right. The great Leon Wheeler. What am I watching? Oh, a hot mess. You already read this <laughs> trigger alert, right? <laughs> yeah. So we're hour in or so. Listen, um, I've got a, a number of schools of thought here. When I first moved to Colorado, courtesy of the United States Air Force, um, there was uh, there was a continuum of housing, affordability, accessibility. Looked like condos, maybe very tiny condos, but mm-hmm. still condos. Mm-hmm. You saw a lot of single folks live in those. Um, all the way up to these single family, you know, Mc- McMansions yeah. um, in certain parts of the city. And then over time, and this is what I would like for those who are fighting this tit for tat, um, this or that, affordable or not, get at these construction defect laws so that we can go back to a full-on inventory so that we might have accessible, attainable housing for everyone. Mm, Yes. And move away from this model that only speaks to a certain buyer or, or desired neighbor. And so it's, it's, uh, it's a lot more nuanced in the conversation that we're having. And so if we spent some energy just on the construction defect laws, and now listen, that was intentional, by the way. Mm. Um, what we were finding was rapid growth, shoddy construction, yes, and then um, sort of a plausible deniability with the builder as to who the problem was. Mm-hmm. And so a person who then owned a condo whose plumbing may have been subpar, Mm-hmm. find themselves with a burst pipe that affects three other units. Right. The developer said that wasn't on us. That was on the owner of the, of the, of the unit. And so they put into this, uh, into law, this construction defect piece. Um, and ultimately, developers said, I can't build and keep the margins I want to keep if I'm going to have to hold liability for wow. a defect. You said margins. Do you mean wow. this has something to do with Top and bottom and line loss? growth. Yeah, five, five, the five financial factors, right? <laughs> Top and bottom, bottom line growth, working capital turn, profit. Mm-hmm. You, you mean, but they don't, they, don't, they don't have that com- conversation with us in the community. They just say, you want grocery store. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly yeah. what they say. And, and, and so here's the thing. We have elected officials. We also have private industry who makes decisions about where they want to build. We're seeing it now. And if they really want it, and it's been said, if they really wanted to build a grocery store uh, in Park Hill, you'd have one already. Exactly. A long time ago. A long time ago. And you're about to get one with all this density. And and listen, (laughs) and and they would continue to invest um, in existing uh, marketplaces that are in the area. So, so there's, there's, there's a relationship between developer and, and the city government. Mm-hmm. And there are folks who are doing uh, calculus. It's the derivative. How do I make profit? Correct. What types of things do I do? It's a calculus problem. Um, and so if I'm King Supers and I can't come into the math that justifies building a King Supers, right. and also maybe world-class city also means we don't have this many black people around here. I don't yeah. know. That part. Now that's, I don't know. That? I'm you know, to uh, wonder if that's what we meant. Manushka, <laughs> hey, Manushka well, listen, said that your curls is on hit. Let me tell you something. <laughs> listen, that's that style. I'm telling you, I wasn't sure what was going to happen to me when I got back to this dry, arid climate, but my product <laughs> is on fleek. <laughs> Yeah, it's all hit. Thank you, sis. Appreciate you. Chevy curls educating the natural community one scalp at a time. You got those little skinny curls, make them chubby. chubby. Um, now, the great Leanne Wheeler, I want to keep down this line because folks are confused. They're having this argument about I want a golf course, I don't want a golf course, or whatever. They're talking like they own the land. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so here's the thing. Now, first of all, like, uh, what's who's it doesn't get a vote? Actually, oh, yeah, well, vote. you know, I told you his business. What you well, telling Yeah, that's, that's my friend, Robert. <laughs> that's really none of my business. I don't live right. in, I don't he's, live he's in gonna Denver. Vote, he's going <laughs> to vote yes on 301 and no right, on 302. Right. Because at least, at least Robert lives close to the golf no, course. Yeah. The ones that are really running this, and they, can't, they, ain't, even get, they ain't getting a ballot. They don't right. get a vote. Mm. Right, you right, know. right. Can you imagine they went out to the, the, to the seniors of Windsor Garden and said, I'd like for you to, to stay out of this? 
It ain't none of your business. <laughs> Do you think they re- they didn't they didn't tell them that like that? They were singing no, the praises because those it. seniors are the voters, and they like you go up to them and you're they're like consistent voters. You know, you having a voice is bad yes. for you. Yeah, you need to stay out of this. Right. They didn't say that. No. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Uh-huh. Politics is grimy. Isn't it is it grimy oh, or is it just dirty. this one? Or, or is it getting grimier? I think it's getting grimier. It's getting grimier. You think it's getting it's grimier? Getting grimier. No, like do you it's all getting think it's getting grimier? Getting grimier? Absolutely. Like, you've been is. watching politics for a while. Is it, get, is it getting mm. like, ugh? It's getting worse. It Values sad. are being mm. thrown out the window. People don't have home training no more. <laughs> you know, that's what, they, that's what it is. No, home, home training. training. People oh, don't have home training no more. We were raised with a certain value system. That's, sure. that's being... Like, you got sure. black folks now, they're mad at each other based yeah. on politics that right. have nothing to do with them. Like, mm. yeah. like, Andrew Klein ain't building no houses for you. Mm. Like it, None. It, like, business is a certain income level. Like, if you're at a certain income level, then you get a check cash in place... You know what I mean? If you're at a right. certain, if you're at a certain income level, you exactly. get a rental limit. You, yeah, you, you right. Know, you, you get you're at a certain that. level. You, you get club you get, tattoos. You get you get, you, you get the strip <laughs> club. You get the same you, block. You, you get the folks where you can still smoke nicotine and blow it in people's faces oh, inside. Oh, you know, we don't care. It's at over all. There. At you all. Know? And so, mm. and then you get folks that just are they're like identifying with the folks that have something. Like, right. Yeah. And, and like. You have a house on the golf course on the 18th hole. I'm unhoused, but I can someday have that. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to do the, mo- the movie thing. I can <laughs> someday right. have that. It's and a psyops <laughs> thing. And, and, it, and it seems, you are so, oh my God. <laughs> it's working, though. I mean, it, it, it does work. It this. is. It does work. This has nothing. Rich folks business that got a whole bunch of change. Mm-hmm. Don't have no intentions for you, but getting what little change you got. That's right, not at all. And that is the calculus, and and they know when that's going to spin down. Yeah. And it's easier to do uh, if you are relegated to a certain part of town, Mm -hmm. and um, uh, and the only things you have access to are the vices, uh, so to speak, the vices and addiction, and um, and you don't see your way past that other than. Um, by proxy, they might trot somebody black that's doing well out in front of you who's oh, on yes, the right. other side of the issue yeah. um, that does convince you to, to, to point over yonder wistfully, oh. I too can, yes. I just yeah. have to do whatever it is, fill in the blank. We called that Amway when I was a kid. Oh, dude, Ponzi scheme. I, I draw, <laughs> <not> Amway. <laughs> Amway, we draw them circles oh. on you. What kind of house you want to live in? How many rooms right. you got? Right. Oh my word. Okay. Just sell this soap. <laughs> they ain't that much soap in the world not at all, much. and it's and it's not attainable not that all. way. And the point was made earlier uh, about um, land ownership and wealth. You know, we're seeing this now just with my mom's house. Um, folks calling all the time, yeah. um, wanting to buy. There's nothing more affordable than I already own it. Exactly. That's right. Um, that's on period. No, no, That's no. right. That's no. on period. Say that Say one it again. again. I said there's Say nothing more affo- affordable than already owning it. And <laughs> right. so my mother has the benefit of having a daughter who has built, project managed, um, a development and um, understands the concept of opportunity zones and planning and zoning mm-hmm. and, and how you disinvest and how you disincentivize and how you incentivize, right? And so we get the call. And it's a $25 million opportunity zone. So, frankly, the house is worth $1.2 million to that mm. opportunity zone. Mm. Not whatever you say the tax assessment right. is about. Yeah. Mm. And so we have got to get smarter as black folks um, in community where we own property and understand these nuanced differences. Uh, so not all money is the same color. Now, you joke a lot about it being green. Uh-huh. Um, and ultimately, it is green. But there's the but truth, the whole are, truth, and nothing but right, the truth. That's three right. truths. Right, and so there's some there's some other nuances <laughs> mm-hmm. here. What it's worth to the to the developer, for yes. instance, um, uh, your cost of ownership, and and the way you access it versus the way someone who has wealth and means accesses um, right. home ownership. And so there are products that get developed with an understanding that the blacks only have so much money and access. We're going to create certain opportunities for them to access home ownership. And it might encroach on predatory, mm. right? Um, 
there are other folks in our community, other demographics in the community who never have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. And so now we've created an entire industry around poverty. Yes. And mm -hmm. we've been able to say um, that um, this is the only way trusted people, black proxies, say this is the only way we can do this right. is if we take out these high interest loans or if yeah. we yield all of our autonomy and power and control over a thing. Mm. And so the simple truth of the matter is, is my understanding um, is that when Mayor Webb uh, put this easement in, um, and to your point, he understood what was coming. What was coming, what was coming. He met that, with them every day. That was a citywide decision and procured with citywide tax dollars. That's right. right. And so, so this conversation that only a subset of folks who are now immersed in black proxy, there's, there's folks coming at them, you know, Listen, I've got, my, I've got my own business. I know what it is to run a business, mm -hmm. right? And so, so at the end of the day, me I, too. Right? So I, like, <laughs> yeah. I like, to your point, I like to be able to go to bed at night knowing I've aired on this yes. side. <laughs> yes. Now, looking out for my folks, but what my mom just said to me recently was that somebody pointed to the ship. Somebody directed black folks to the ship from the island. Right. Mm. And they, too, had descendants. Mm. Wow. And so we oh. got to. Oh, no. No, say that oh. part. And they, too, had descendants. <laughs> right. That's what she said. That's an elder. My elder said that. Love it. Right. And so, right. Thought, wow. right. And so what, we, what we don't see is anything new under the sun. Not we just mm. we call it something different. But um, mm. there's always going to be a, pl a black proxy. Yeah. Um, to speak to black community, mm -hmm. uh, the further you move away from equity and fairness and purity and benevolence. Yeah. There, if, if I'm, if I'm going to talk to you righteously, I'm going to show up and talk to you myself. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm not going to send somebody that looks right. like you. That's right. If Andy right. Klein showed up right now, nobody would recognize him. I'd recognize him because well, I looked at yeah, the website. Because you know, you know, you're in that world. <laughs> uh, okay, before you all go, I got I want to, I want to, I want to ask your interpretation of a comment. Okay, I'm just, I'm just gonna, because it's got one thumbs up on it. Mm. It's got a thumbs up. No. This comment, Robert Greer made a comment, and it's got no, a thumbs Robert. up. So, in the context of the conversation that we've been having, here's the comment. Robert says. How much did Wellington Webb's house appreciate this year? One hundred thousand dollars. And please take it from there. So what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, all of our homes have appreciated. What? What? What's? What's the point? I mean, I don't know. I don't understand what that has to do with anything. I mean, because there was there at the beginning of this conversation. Someone <laughs> said that it was pointed out that it's, Penfield Tate and Wellington Webb yeah. are homeowners. What? What? And, what's, but it was used against them. Like, it was, well, what's, you wrong do know, with, what's wrong you with do know that Penfield and Wellington own houses? And every and somebody had to say what? <laughs> like, oh what's hell, wrong no! With somebody, that? no, Shanta, somebody had to say, oh hell no! You what? Own houses. <laughs> Now there's a piece, and now now ask him how much so your house being appreciates. Punished. Like, what is this argument? What he's is being punished it? because he bought his house when he bought it, <laughs> and now it's worth a certain amount. Well, what's wrong with that? My mama bought her house for sixteen thousand dollars. That's right. It is now worth one hundred seventy-eight right. thousand dollars, according to the tax assessment. To the development, it's worth right. one point two million dollars. That's right. right. And okay. that's what I'm talking about. Is that if you don't understand the, that calculus? Then, then you're having. Don't entertain this argument. Just I'm, don't entertain. I it. could probably be <laughs> off, Tosh. I could probably be off because the way I'm interpreting this is, and I don't know. What you gonna buy folks when say, you sell it? Folks say, folks <laughs> say things like this. Get a good education, get a good job. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden you can own a house, and then you know Isn't the best that the way American to get dream? the best way to gain your way into the middle class is home ownership and then you get equity and like oh isn't that how it works that's what it's they say so now you got some work. black folks that own some houses and got some equity and some appreciation and it's like ask them how much their house is appreciated right. like <laughs> like what part of see that I don't understand what games is being run, Tosh. Can you help me understand because I'm not in I don't know. My my wrap up statement bumper sticker is and billboard more parks Robert and thumbs up person. Less parking lots. Even if that space were 
developed for affordable housing, we don't know that any of the people who have been displaced, actually we do. We do know. They, they would not be able to buy there. <laughs> Absolutely not. So I'm not sure who, who the client is, but I know who the client is for me. The client is, and, and Dr. Lisa said this, and Shanta has already reinforced it, the community, our community. So, so you know, I just can't, I can't understand why we need to bring up anyone's appreciation. And I have another, I have a question for, for Robert as well. Uh, what is the land worth to the developer versus what they paid for it? Mm. I, I see these are the questions that, see that's a bigger question like the question is what's an easement mm -hmm. you want housing for your clients but there's an easement that prevents you building housing so as a great steward and leader then you go find another place where you can build houses hey if you like, really if, mean if, it if exactly you the, like if you and our property clients, was the third property we looked at you know it, it wasn't the first it one. wasn't the first <laughs> This is not okay. available. You keep going. Like, okay. right. yeah. If you want to build housing, build housing. Right. We meant to build it. We were like, gonna build it. You know who could help them probably? <laughs> Habitat for Humanity or somebody. Like yeah. there's a whole bunch of folks that build housing. Oh, watch out. And so like mm. it, it's not that hard. Like, go ahead, find the land, get the financing, yeah. get the construction work, get the permits, do the politics, get your housing up. Yeah. But what you're saying is, I want housing. But I don't care about that easement of yours. Mm -hmm. And so, like, the question of mm -hmm. if you're having a housing conversation with your clients, and wh would you say, man, you know what's a trip? What's a trip, Robert? What's a trip, Robert? Like, what's a trip, Robert? <laughs> you are on tilt. <laughs> but, but what? Hold on, no. Oh, my God. No, because, no, no. Cause, you know, you... Because you're somebody, you you know, you're just getting in, you're just getting in the game. You don't know some somebody so the savior comes, you know, I'm here to get you some housing. Like get you some housing. That's yeah. why I'm here to get you yeah, some housing. Yeah, yeah. And you're welcome. And you, you know, and you're like, housing? What's housing? <laughs> well, housing's when you listen here. Housing, housing when you got your own key. You come in when you want, you go out where you want. And if a grocery store ain't close, we get one built for you. you know, <laughs> so like, you can walk to it. <laughs> get, a, get a grocery store and some housing? Yes, sir. And guess what? Wellington E. Webb down the street, how dare that Negro? He got $100,000 in equity. In what? In, in what? In housing. What? <laughs> housing? Robert ain't coming on here. <laughs> They got a hundred thousand dollars in equity. I think they just want you renting, and so, so that's the new that's the new calculus. That's the new calculus. Oh actually. But what God. happens if all you have to do is I'm go dead. through a process to remove an easement that was like? What is the value of having a conservation mm. easement? If you can make a, a backdoor deal, backroom right. deal or whatever, and get that removed and sell it in, we're going to do whatever we want to do. Like, just the fact that this is a fight is important to, exactly. you know, development, community development. Everyone. Exactly. As we move forward. Stream, I mean. Yeah. Exactly. I have to oh. count on my, I have to count on my backdoor deal if I want to build a building. But uh, hmm. uh, true supportive housing, hmm. truly to see about unhoused people hmm. or people who have been evicted or coming out of prison. That's what I built. Man. That's what we project managed. Well, That's I what can we tell built. you, the great Land so, Wheeler, I got it. I, I, housing? Housing? <laughs> well, that man across the street, oh, no good scoundrel. What'd he do? He got some equity. In what? A house. <laughs> That's, the, That's that what the you gig? want me to give? Uh, right. Make it make sense. Oh, man. Great, Leanne yes. Wheeler. Before we go, I want... Yes. You know we always talk about watermelon politics. We do. Mm. Oh, I want to ask just real quick before you go, where are we at on the um, menthol flavor ban and nicotine world? 
that's right oh. here in this city. Listen, I'm just coming from the um, city and county uh, uh, Denver building where we had a hearing on today. There have been five amendments, five <laughs> amendments wow. uh, offered a- against this um, um, flavor ordinance. Uh, and while we've been messing around in Denver on this, and we, by we I mean um, we, all of us, um, this precise legislation has passed in two different places, in Maine uh, and, um, oh shoot, I'm drawing a blank on the second place, um, all flavors, to include menthol, all mm. products. So listen, the question I have for folks who um, testified uh, on this uh, initiative or testified against it uh, in this adult choice, and I know um, I, I am a card-carrying Wellington Webb fan <laughs> and know that he's right on this Park Hill uh, 301. Sadly, he's not right on his position where it stands um, with menthol uh, in community. Hmm. And, and that's heartbreaking uh, uh, because simply... Uh, this is a predatory industry. The idea is to get you addicted when you're young. They are on record. Yes. This industry is saying they want to hook the young, yeah. the black, the huh. poor, and the stupid. Wow. And they have done a fabulous job of doing just that, addict those groups as they occur for them. My I'm focused wow. on black. Mm. And they have been um, very deliberate um, in uh, buying off black proxy. Uh, in the metro, uh, in addition to um, uh, targeting black folks with with marketing and um, not kicking in anything on health disparities, so nicotine's or, uh, a good thing. Uh, no, actually, it's it's all about adult choice. No, no but nicotine's uh, a good thing. No, they won't tell you that. Now, what they will tell you. See, I'll be at Shanta. You see the questions I be asking. <laughs> I hear you. Like, no, like, I have no. the same question. Well, hold on just a second, Shanta. We're gonna get a grocery store, but we're gonna say you can't sell nicotine in it. Mm. Let's do that. How about, about that? Health. I bet you won't. I <laughs> Wait, bet they won't not? say that. I why? bet they won't say that. Why not? I, you already know the answer that. billion to that. dollar industry. <laughs> 200 and some billion dollars. Let's talk about it. 85% yeah. of black smokers smoke menthol. You think they're going to let that bag go? Please. Right. They're not. You know what Please. I noticed? What? I haven't seen cigarettes in Whole Foods or Whole Haven't Chip. you? Have you, you been, don't say. Have you seen the cigarettes and nicotine products in Whole Foods? I have not. Natural I bet you see them over there in this one if, 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 mm. if they get it anywhere near the blacks. If this is about the blacks. Oh, yeah. yeah. I guarantee you going to be some nicotine because there's some folks saying that that's a part of black culture. Mm-hmm. Listen, and it's a damn lie. Oh. Here's what happened. Mm-hmm. We read this right there. This is a show that triggers people. And so what we know <laughs> is going back to what we were discussing earlier. Let's talk about housing and neighborhoods and proximity. Most folks who don't have wealth are on foot. Mm. Yeah. And if they're fortunate, they can take rail, public transportation. Um, they're only going so far. Mm-hmm. And if you can um, create, I'm going to call it opportunity, you can set up a retailer to sell nicotine products. Well, it doesn't matter the delivery system. We want to we wanna parse whether it's vape, e-cigarette. It's all of them. None of them are good for you. Um, but what we know is that 85% of black smokers smoke menthol. Yeah. yeah. That we do know. Yeah. And it's uh, available to them so they don't even have to get in their car and drive. Mm. And then you maybe find a black proxy that says it's adult choice. And the only question I have for anybody making that argument is how old were you when you started your nicotine right. addiction? Mm. Right. Wow. And where did you get it from? Right. Oh. Wow. Because what's happening with the discussion in Park Hill and what's happening with this same discussion is this notion that um, uh, it's, it's cut and dry, it's black and white, it, it's this snapshot in time. Yeah. Uh, the example was made that a 55-year-old should, that, who smokes should be able to get that if they want that. That 55-year-old is addicted to nicotine Since first, he was 15. Ha- at yeah. least, because there is no 55-year-old that's just going to start smoking. Absolutely right. Because here's what you know. It affects your personal economy. Yes. It affects your health. Yes. 
It affects, in, in some cases, your ability to be insured. Mm-hmm. It affects your ability. It, so it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's not just 55-year-olds aren't going to do that. So what I, that's the question I have is when that argument gets made. <laughs> Ain't a leaf going to be near this bed at all. all. <laughs> are you getting ready to put a, are you getting ready to sell it? Every single one. I'm like, go 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 as soon as you call it, they'll, they'll be done. Like maybe maybe there's somebody's listening. They're like, send you're talking, about, up the, talking about that nicotine. You need to be talking about yeah. that housing that yeah. ain't get put up because of easement, okay. but you better okay. stay off that nicotine. Yeah, that yeah. nicotine. We, we've got to get to a place where our elected <laughs> officials, and here's the great news here, um, yeah. is that Denver has led on so many significant pieces of legislation in yeah. the past. Yeah. It it's just it, it boggles the mind that they're not taking the lead on this this particular initiative. Mm-hmm. Um Edgewater's passed or other you know, there there are municipalities in the state of Colorado that have passed this and aren't having the angst about it um that 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 we're seeing in Denver. How much money is involved? Listen, let's talk about that. Mm. Uh, so this industry is uh, nearly a half trillion dollar industry wow. year wow. over year. Here's also what we don't talk very much trillion. about. Here's what we also don't talk about. The tobacco industry is still paying out on a tobacco settlement for some ill will lies um, uh, that they told some years back. Mm. I busted for it. Got a little slap on the hand. Mm-hmm. A little tiny slap on mm-hmm. the hand. Um, because what they've been forced to pay out in settlement money over a 25-year period is about what they would make in one year wow. of revenue. Wow. <laughs> but in some instances, it's more money than anybody's ever seen. So wow. that said, um, just know that the industry is not your friend. In fact, Correct. they are the enemy of black people. That's and right. that we refuse to see that yeah. is astonishing to me, that anyone would carry their water is astonishing to me Mm -hmm. that anyone of faith would carry their water Mm -hmm. act justly love mercy walk humbly with god would carry their (coughs) water so so that's what we see and then what ends up happening and this is what the black proxies don't get is that they are in the back room talking about you in the worst possible terms now maybe you don't care about that because they gave you a little five grand or something like that yeah but they got you made out to be. They don't care about you either. Suckers. <laughs> that being. And now I gave you money last year for you to be a sucker again this year Absolutely. and carry my water. Absolutely. And to think. And to think. And we'll show Ooh. up. We'll show up and testify. We'll. we'll, we'll right. I, I, it's befuddling. It's, it's, it's amazing. I, I don't get it. And it seems to be in any industry that. Um, where black folks are, are getting the, the short end of the straw, frankly. Yeah. Well, I could tell you, thank you all. We it's need city council to say yes to this ordinance. I'm sorry. No, yeah. say no exceptions, council? no exemptions, mm-hmm. all flavors, all products, everywhere. That's on period and Mary's Little Lamb. <laughs> Right, I am complete with that. Uh, the great Leanne Wheeler is back home. Is it, you can, can you feel it? Yes, oh, you can. Yes. Um, again, you're, you've got your ballots. Uh, make sure that you go and vote, vote yes on 301, no on 302, and then yes. also um, talk to your city council person and ask them uh, which part of nicotine are you supporting because it's good for you. Mm. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, see, let's just get away from all the argument. Which part of nicotine is good for you? Which part of that easement you don't understand? Right. Like, also. everything else is a whole bunch <laughs> right. of other stuff. Which right. part of that? <laughs> like, what are we talking part? about? Distraction, <laughs> gas like, oh, Which yeah. part of nicotine Deflect. is good for you? Like, if it's so good for you, why don't you give it to your kids? Yeah, like, exactly. hey, I'd like for you to be addicted like right. me. Yeah. Like, that's that good won't. for the kids. Like, you running for school board, and you want to be a teacher, you want to be around the kids, and you're like, but I want you to be addicted to nicotine. Right. Huh. See, it don't, it don't, add, it don't up. add up. So which part of nicotine is good for you? And then which part of that conservation easement into perpetuity don't you understand? Because everything right. else is a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, you, you just need to talk to the Denver City Council people, right? Talk to Denver City Council. Let them know that you want all flavors, including menthol, all products, all locations, period. Tell them addiction don't taste good and no flavor. At yes, all. At, at all. all. At all.
addiction does not taste good in any flavor. <laughs> now I'll listen, you off. Here's, I want to make one clarifying point. Um, we're talking about flavors, prohibition of the sale of flavored products. If you believe nicotine is a great health decision for you. Take it straight, no chaser. Take it straight right. to the head. That's right. <laughs> if it's so good, it'll... That's right. You can like, still get that. Poof. You'll still take it, get take that. Yeah. Yeah. Over there and get you some tobacco they, taste the and flavor, stuff. Yeah. The flavor is what lets get you in. But That's it's like, right. no, no, they, uh-huh. here's your nicotine. Go What's that? There. A house. House, Fiddler. <laughs> house running around that nicotine. <laughs> Look, I'm gone. No, <laughs> wait, wait. One last thing. Why are we doing that? Right? There's all kind of uses for oh, land. Oh, my goodness. We need houses. We need stores. We absolutely do. We need. And nobody's against okay. that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Find some other land. Find yeah. somewhere else to shoot. <laughs> if it Thumbs don't have, up. Listen, if it don't have an easement, it's open right. for up business. Up for grabs. Exactly. Like, up for grabs. Like, when you got your money out, you're like, I want to build a house. Does that land got an easement on it? Nope. Exactly. You're all set. And that was two thumbs. <laughs> two thumbs. That was four <laughs> thumbs. And quit going to Mary <laughs> Helen Windsor Garden attacking her trying to get the seniors to vote against her own interests and your own interests. Oh you have a gosh. say in this. You help pay for that easement and all of that other stuff. And so if anybody comes up and tells you, and you can ask, uh, you can ask Robert or anybody, if they say, you ain't got no say in this, you need to stay out of it. And they say, okay. you like, <laughs> if you go down, go down nah, swinging. <laughs> Just might score a knockout. Rumble, young man, women in community. <laughs> Rumble. Yes on 301. No on 302. Call your city council All person right. if you're in the mile high income city Please. and say, you know what? Nicotine's not good in any flavor. That's and if they right. say it's really good, say that's why the Mile High Income City has just hit the top ten in rats. And oh, we're not talking ooh. about the rats. Mm, now we're talking about the political rats. Two legged oh. rats now. Mm. Bah, bah, bah. Nah. Rumble, bah, young bah, man, bah. woman, and community. Rumble. <laughs> <laughs>